In this video, we're going to be taking a look at two pulley problems where the pulley has a significant mass and some rotational inertia, and then we're going to solve for the linear acceleration of the objects and the system. So I did some labeling over here. I have a vertical pulley system where we have a five kilogram mass being pulled up by the rope, which we call T1, and we have a force of gravity down, which is the mass of the five kilogram block times G, and then similar things for the two kilogram object. Now, the two kilogram block is attempting to tug this string downward and is providing some torque, which we'll call torque number two. And then this five kilogram block is tugging on the string that has a torque, which we'll call torque number one. Now we can safely assume because the five kilogram mass is obviously heavier that it's gonna win um, the battle of pulling the rope and then making the whole system go around and have the pulley rotate clockwise. Now, if you take a look at the whole system, that means that torque number one minus torque number two equals the net torque or the torque on the disc. Okay, I spread it out across the entire screen because I'm gonna have to do a bunch of substitutions. The first one I'm gonna have to do is we're taking a look at the net torque or the torque on the disc. Um, we can go ahead and substitute that out for I alpha, the rotational inertia of a disc along with the angular acceleration. And we're going to go ahead and make one more substitution. The I, the rotational inertia for a disc is one half MR squared. And then the angular acceleration can also be expressed by A over R. Now, we did want to make a couple substitutions like that because we had too many unknown variables. Um, we don't have a lot to work with if we just have everything in terms of torque like we have in purple over here. So with those two substitutions, um, I now have uh, one of the R's cancel and I have one half um, R A on this side, which I like because I have the mass, we'll call it MD, mass of the disc, um, which is one kilogram right over here. Um, I have the R value, which is the radius of the disc, the 0 0.2 meters over here. And then I'm looking for the angular acceleration. So I definitely want that variable um, in my equation as well. All right, for the other ones, um, we have a torque provided by um, the two kilogram block, this one over here. And that torque is provided by the force of T2 times R, the lever arm, which is the radius of the disc or the pulley. Um, oh, sorry, this is T1. And then over here, we have the same sort of thing. We have the tension from T2. And then that has an R value too. It has a lever arm, which again is R, the radius of the circle um, or the pulley. <laughs> Now, again, we have too many um, unknown variables here, so we're gonna have to do some substitutions. So let's go ahead and focus on um, this block over here first. So we know this block is gonna move downwards because it's the heavier one, it's the more massive one. So what we can do is over here, we can say that the M5G that's pulling the five kilogram block downwards is propelling it. The T1 is resisting it. Minus T1 equals the net force, which is M times A. And then we're going to go ahead and solve for T1. If we add T1 to both sides, T1 is going to end up over here. And then you're going to end up subtracting the M5A from this side. And it's going to end up on this side over here. All right, so we want to do that substitution. So then again, we have some more known variables and we pull out an A, a linear acceleration. That's the variable that we're going to be solving for. Um, so let's go ahead and substitute this out. And we have T1, which is M5G minus M5A, and that whole entire thing times R, the R that was initially here before. So we're gonna do something similar for our two kilogram block. So um, for the two kilogram block, we have the T2 as the driving force because it's gonna be moving up 
eventually because the five killer M block is tugging it. And then it's going to be counteracted by its own FG, which is M2G. And that equals the net force, which is M2A. So if we solve for T2, we're just going to add this to both sides. So that's M2G to the right side of the equal sign plus M2A. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with um, torque number one, and we're going to sub in the T2 over here and take this M2G plus M2A. And then turns out that the R cancels out and we don't really need it anyways. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place everything that has a a with it, or the M5A, the M2A, and then I'm just leaving this one over here, but placing all those things to the right side of my equal sign. So I'm going to add this to the other side. So I got M5A. Uh, I'm going to um, add this to the other side because it's subtracted from here. So if you distribute the minus sign, it's um, adding M2A to each side. And then I'm going to include my original one half um, D A. Um, on the left side, I have my M5 um, G from right over here. And then I also have my M2 um, G, which is right over there. So what I can do is if I factor the A out from all of these, then the A is going to pop out. And then we are going to have um, 5 plus M2 um, plus 1 half um, D equals the other side. And you're basically dividing both sides by this. So we can cancel this one out. And then it's going to show up on this side over here. And that is our final expression for the linear acceleration. So if we plug in our 5, our 9.8, our 2, our 9.8, our 5, 2, and our one half times the mass of the disk, which is one. Um, we can go ahead and get our final linear acceleration, which comes out to be 3.92 meters per second squared. Now for the second problem, uh, I'm not gonna work it out in its entirety, but um, let me go ahead and clear a little space first. So in this scenario, up in this corner over here, it is very similar um, to what's going on over here with this first pulley in the sense that we have a torque one from the five kilogram mass pulling it downward. And then we have the inertia of this two kilogram um, block trying to pull the string um, that way a little bit and providing some torque, which I call torque two. So we have a torque one minus the torque two, just like we have here in purple, torque one minus torque two equals the torque of the disc. And that was due to the um, T1 and T2, the tension one and the tension two. Okay, so this problem is actually exactly the same as the first one with one exception. Um, if we're taking a look at the two kilogram block that's sitting on the table, um, it's pretty different than this one that's freely um, hanging without sitting on a table. So we just have a, uh, a force of tension T2 to the right. So that T2 is the only force in the parallel direction. If we're saying that it's a frictionless table, therefore that's equal to that force, which is um, 2A. So... Um, for this second problem, it's actually identical to the first one, except if we take this one over here and slide that in over here for this T2, 
um, we can go ahead and solve for the problem very similarly, um, except we're going to get a slightly different result. And in the end, it's going to end up looking like this. The mass of the 5 kilogram times G times 9.8 divided by um, 5 plus um, 2 plus 1 half the mass of the disk. Um, and then for this scenario, if you plug in all your numbers, you're going to get a linear acceleration of 6.53. meters per second squared. Okay, so again, if we um, solve for the T2, make this substitution, place it in here, and then over here, if we have an M2A, and we just go through all the algebraic steps of moving stuff around to isolate our A, um, then we're gonna get A equals all of this over here. We're gonna plug in our masses, our 9.8 for our G value, and then we're gonna get an acceleration of 6.53 meters per second squared. So in both of these cases, or in any case that is similar to this, you're going to take a look at the pulley, um, look at how the ropes are tugging on it, and see which way the, the torque is um, pushing or pulling. And then with those two torques, you're going to either add or subtract them. In both of these cases, we're subtracting them. And you're going to do some substitutions as we did in the red. Um, and then as we did in the blue over here to get our masses and linear accelerations into the expression so that we can solve for the linear acceleration. Um, so I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.